This video is on interpreting graphs of functions. Knowing how to interpret a graph can help you to better understand the information that the graph is conveying. Some of the key aspects of a graph that we want to look at are the x and y intercepts and the slope. And we want to ask ourselves, what do these mean within the context of the graph? Let's take a look at a couple examples here. So here's a graph that relates the amount of a late fee to the number of days a book is overdue. So on the x-axis, I have the number of days overdue. On the y-axis, I have the amount of the late fee. And it's always kind of nice when your graph has a title telling you what's going on. Okay. Um, the number of days that the book is overdue is the independent variable because that can change or vary. Um, if I'm just don't get around to returning the book to the library, that's what's going to change. If I'm very diligent and I'm like, oh my gosh, my book is due today, um, that's why it's independent. The dependent variable is the late fee because how much I have to pay in the late fee depends on how many days overdue the book is. One other thing that you'll notice about this graph is that it's not a line, but it's a set of points that kind of lie on a line. The word that we use to describe this kind of graph is the word discrete. It's a set of unconnected points. And this really makes sense here. We don't really want to connect these because there's a certain amount that's due, a certain amount of late fee if the book is one day overdue, and a certain amount if it's two days overdue. Never will we really have a value like in here where it's one and a half days due. If we were to connect this with a line, that would mean that every point in between one day and two days would be a different late value of a late fee. So this is a discrete graph, and sometimes that makes more sense when you're conveying this information to have just a set of points. The x and y intercepts of this graph are both zero, so that's kind of strange. It crosses the x-axis and the y-axis right here. Why is that? Well, because if your book is over to zero days, you don't owe any money. And is the slope positive or negative? What is the slope and what does it mean? This is going to have a positive slope because the graph is basically going up. Even though it's not a line, you can tell that it's basically going up. And what is the slope? Um, the slope is probably a little less than one because you'll notice that after one day, hard to tell exactly what the late fee is, but it might be something like, you know, maybe 80 or 90 cents, not quite a dollar. Here's another graph. This is a continuous graph. In other words, all of the points in this graph are connected with a sm smooth curve, or in this case, they're connected by a line. Let's take a look and interpret this graph with the following questions. So what is the y-intercept of this graph? The y-intercept is going to be this point up here, 360. Now what does that mean within the context of the graph? Let's take a look at this. So this, the title on this graph is hiking elevation. My x-axis is time in minutes. My y-axis is height above the canyon floor in feet, and I notice that it's kind of generally going downhill. So what does this mean? This means the person is hiking. They start above the canyon floor, so they're starting on a ridge, and the height they're starting at is 350, 360 feet above the bottom of the canyon. And as time goes on, as time passes, they're descending down into the canyon. My x-intercept is 18, or 18 minutes. What does that mean? Well, at this point, at 18 minutes, you'll notice that my height above the canyon floor is zero. In other words, it's taken me, taken this hiker 18 minutes to get to the, to get to the bottom of the canyon. What is, let's see, I believe I asked what is the slope? Oh no, what is the point 10, 160 represent? So let's find that point right here. So the point 10, 160 would be approximately right here. That means that after 10 minutes of hiking, the hiker is 160 feet above the canyon floor. And what is the slope of this? I could actually, probably the easiest way to do that is to pick two points. My y-intercept was the point, what was my y-intercept? My y-intercept was the point 0, 360. And my x-intercept was the point, whoops, 18, comma 0. So I can do 360 minus 0 over 0 minus 18, or 360 over negative 18, or negative 
20. So what does that mean? That means that from here, let's say from any two points, so from this point to this point, I'm dropping 20 feet on the canyon floor every minute. So every minute the person is descending in altitude by 20 feet. When you're interpreting the graph of a function, you really want to take the time and look at all of these different points. What is the y-intercept of the graph? What does it mean within the context of the graph? What is the x-intercept of the graph? What does that mean? What's the slope and what does that mean? And let's do one here together where we actually have to graph it. A fishing boat is 35 miles from the shore and it takes the crew seven hours to return back to the shore, back to the dock. We need to sketch a linear graph that models this situation. We want to make sure that we're labeling our axes and then we're going to identify the x and y intercepts, interpret what they mean, identify the slope and interpret that, choose a point on the graph and explain what it means. That's a lot of information. So we have a fishing boat that's 35 miles from the shore and it takes it seven hours to come back. So I'm going to go ahead and label my graph here. So I'm going to make my x-axis time in hours and I think I can label this with single units. I'm going to make my y-axis my distance from the shore and that was in miles and they started out 35 miles out. I can't count by ones here so I think I'm going to count by fives. I think that kind of makes sense. Okay, uh, so when they started out, they were 35 miles from the shore. So that's going to be my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 35. That means they started 35 miles out from the shore. My x-intercept is 7 that's going to be this point right here and what that means is that it takes them seven hours to return. <clears throat> this graph then is going to look something like this. I don't know how well I drew that. That's not too bad. Oops. Okay, uh, the slope of this line, let's go ahead and calculate that. There's my y-intercept, there's my x-intercept, thirty-five over a negative seven or a negative five, so my slope is negative five. What that means is that, and you'll notice that the slope of this line is negative because their distance from the, sh from the uh, shore is decreasing. Actually, I'm going to redraw my line because that's not a very good line. It's actually going down every hour. Their distance from the shore is decreasing, there we go, by five miles. That's what the slope means. They get closer to the shore by five miles every hour. Okay, are there any other questions? Did I get everything there? Choose a point on the graph and explain what it means. So let's choose any point. Let's choose this point right here. So that's the point 4 comma 15. And what does that mean? It means that after four hours they are 15 miles from shore. Okay, so in this video we took a look at how to interpret the graph of a function. So given a graph or even if you have to create a graph you really need to take a look at the x and the y intercepts and what do those mean within the context of the graph. You should take a look at what the slope is and what does that mean within the context of the graph and when you're interpreting it yes that means you're going to write some words. You've got to explain what it means and it can be very helpful in trying to understand the information that a graph is trying to convey.